Well, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back. It's a new year. I, <laughs> I don't know. I can't believe it. It just makes you feel old. And anyway, <laughs> happy 2022. And yeah, Technolive, we are back as always doing what we like, which is just all computer science -y things, you know, on a stream. So yeah, if you're joining us for the first time, uh, welcome. And if you're coming back to us, I hope you had a lovely break over the uh, winter holidays and you're ready to look at some cool computer science -y stuff. Goodness. <laughs> I'm not used to having so much energy at the start of the stream. It's like, it's like a fresh new start. It's a brand new year. Anyway, yeah, just me today. And uh, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. Mostly because I've been wanting to do this for a long time now, and finally I got ready to do it. And uh, yeah, you might remember a couple of weeks back, I was making a set of electronic bagpipes. And I tried to show it off on the end, all working nicely, and unfortunately it did not. No, it turns out I managed to brick my Arduino, I managed to completely fry it. Uh, so. Over the, the break, I managed to get a new Arduino. And yeah, I thought I'd carry on with that today, just because it's still a good passion of mine. So yeah, welcome to my desk. Hello, those are my fingers. Fingers exist. And uh, this is my new version of the bagpipes that I've uh, updated and worked on. In fact, I've even got... This is, this is where we get cool. I've even got a zoom button. Oh, look at that. Uh, oh, hang on, it's upside down. One moment. Whoop, there we go. It's the right way around now. So yeah, this is my bagpipes. Or at least it's the electronic part of my bagpipes, because the rest of it, I'm really, I'm really pleased with how this has turned out. I've actually made more parts of my bagpipes. So hang on, I'm going to reach down... Uh, Oh, what are bagpipes without a bag? <laughs> well, I've made a bag. Um, yeah, I made it a bit too thin. Uh, I'm not so pleased about that. So if I ever improve it, I might make this a little bit wider. Just have, you know, this is the bit that goes under the arm and you're meant to squeeze. But yeah, all it is, is an old scarf that I asked with permission. I didn't just take an old scarf and, <laughs> and start destroying it. No, I got an uh, old scarf and um, I sewed up the sides with a sewing machine, of course. There is no way I could have done it that neat by hand. So I sewed up both sides. And then for the round bit, I just kind of folded it in and tucked it in. And then I did a sort of round stitch along there both sides and then i stuffed it with old pillow yeah i had an old pillow that had gone a bit musty and moldy so i uh ripped it apart and it's now living inside my bagpipes so i got that part which is fine but that's not the best bit at least in my opinion <laughs> What's a bagpipe without pipes? <laughs> now, these aren't pipes. They're just solid bits of wood. Um, my bagpipes are, of course, electronic. So in a normal set of bagpipes, these would be making the sound. But for me, the sound's going to be coming out of... Uh, this speaker here, which is a big, beefy speaker. I'm going to need an amplifier for it. But that's that's later down the line. But no, these are just going to be my decorative pipes because I just think a bagpipe without pipes is it's not worth it, really. Um, and they're made of old stair banisters or balustrades or whatever the word is. Um, and yeah, I just think they've got a really nice, neat look to them. And usually on a bagpipe, you're meant to have nice silvery bits on, you know, running down the length of the pipe. Uh, I don't have any silver, 
So I got these uh, Jubilee clips, which are just little clips that you can tighten or untighten. And I put them on. And yeah, they look a bit cheap. They look a bit like a bodge. But uh, that's kind of the look I'm going for anyway. So I'm quite pleased with those. And yeah, I'm just going to mount all three of them. You know, there in the bagpipe. And then I've got some rope to string across them because every bagpipe has a little bit of rope and some tassels. So I got that going as well. But yeah, the main point today, let's get that wire safely out of the way, is to show off the actual electronics part. Because I've got my um, Arduino here. And it's running the software that I wrote. And if you want to see how I wrote that, you can check back on the other stream from a month or so ago. And I've improved it a little bit. Uh, you'll notice I haven't currently got any buttons on my breadboard. So the original setup we had is I had a load of buttons. Here's a little packet of some. Lovely little buttons. And what I did was I pushed them into the breadboard and we wired them up so that when you push a button, it'd make a sound. Now, I've done something a bit different for this new version of the bagpipes, and I'm not sure whether it's good or not. Um, that's the problem, you see. I'm not good at electronics. Uh, in fact, they scare me a little bit. All I really understand is yes and no, uh, as a computer scientist should. But electronics is all about different voltages and amperages and I don't know, it just gets weird. But what I've understood from here is I've currently got all my wires plugged into this negative line, this negative rail. And that goes to the ground on the Arduino. And as soon as I take one out of the negative rail, it goes mad and it makes a horrible sound. And I can't uh, demonstrate that in terms of sound because I've reworked my audio setup. If I go over around by ear, this is a view of everything that comes out of the Arduino. And what it's meant to be is nice and clean, and it's meant to be a note one start note one stop uh look what happens when i take out one of these wires from the negative rail it just keeps on playing the same note on and off 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 multiple times a second and if i do it for a different note that's g4 that's f4 and so on that's not quite what i want and if I put it in the positive rail, it stops. But I still have to take it out to do that. So it's, it's not quite working how you'd expect. But I do have... And I picked these up from the indoor market in Swansea. These lovely little push buttons. Come on, focus camera. Focus. Focus. No, it doesn't want to focus today. But yeah, it's just a little button. I just push it in. And that makes the contact. It's a little squeaky, but I reckon I can improve that with a little bit of WD-40 or something that's less damaging to electronics. So maybe contact cleaner. But yeah, just a lovely little button. And what I've started doing is I've mounted these buttons along a piece of wood I cut out, very poorly, I should add. Um, and yeah, that's going to be how I play my bagpipes. I'm going to have my fingers along there, pressing the buttons. Of course, being me, of course I accidentally made the spaces too far apart, so it's a real stretch to get each of my fingers on there. But, you know, you live and learn. Now, if I grab one of these buttons, oh, how many buttons do I have? I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm missing a button. 
but oh well. If I grab one of these buttons... Da -da 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 -da. I need to somehow wire this into my circuit. That's better if I do it that way around, isn't it? Because the things aren't in the way. I need to wire it in so that the um, the Arduino will be able to sense the negative, but only when the button is pressed. I think that's how it goes. So, what I've done, if I grab a wire and I put it in the positive, and then I, I'm bending my jumper wires here, which I shouldn't do, but it saves me getting out uh, any other wire. Okay, then I get my uh, Arduino response. Response wire, you know, the wire that tells the Arduino what it's doing or how it's doing it, you know, sorry, the wire that's sensing the button, and I put it in the other side of the button, there we are. Now, if I go back to my, um, what's it word? you know, a uh, way of telling things. We can see that's going absolutely mad now because I'm currently not in the negative. But as soon as I press the button, it stops. As soon as I let go of the button, it starts. Stop, start, stop, start, stop, start, stop, start. So we're nearly there. And I discovered... There we are. I discovered that if I pop in a resistor going from one side of the button to negative, that fixes the problem. So let me get up a little resistor. And I had one knocking around earlier, but it's been brushed somewhere. Oh, it on the floor. Oh, there it is. There it is. So, I don't know whether you can make that out. Tiny little resistor. I'm going to put it in the negative. And I'm going to attach it to the sensing side of the button. And if we go back to... Uh, nope, that's the wrong one. That's a thing for a Technocamps workshop. If I go to this little button, uh, sorry, this window here, and clear it, we can see that there's no garbage on the screen, but when I press the button, nothing happens. Oh no. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. That's not what I wanted. Oh, I think it's gone wrong. Oh, this is working earlier today. I might have got my wiring wrong. Which is very easy to do. I'm a complete amateur at electronics. And I'll freely admit that. Hmm. Come on. Yeah, man. Yeah, I think I got my circuit wrong. No worries. I've got a circuit diagram I drew ages ago knocking around here somewhere. Give me a moment. Where's that gone? Where have you... Hello. Yeah, here it is. Whenever I des d design something, I always make a design document. And this is the actual one I used. Because I knew things like that would happen. I'd forget one of it as I'm doing. 
But we got a hole on the Arduino. That goes to one side of the button. Then the other side of the button goes to positive. Let's double check that's what I had. Yeah, that's that's what I had. So one side goes to positive, one side goes to the Arduino. And then coming off the positive is a resistor that goes to ground or negative. Oh, so hang on. If I do it on the other side, is that what was causing the problem? I'm trying to thread it through a tiny hole. There we are. You know what? That's behaving entirely differently to how I expect it would, it would behave. Oh, I hate it when it does that. It was working all nice and fine when I planned it out with my diagram. Oh well. Uh, is it the resistor? Uh, is it the resistor value that's causing the problems? We're doing some live debugging here tonight. Although this set of bagpipes is starting to curse me. Okay, different resistor. No, that's not it. That's not it either. Oh, my poor befuddled brain. Let's change out the button. Uh, if the if the components are cheap enough, it could always be the component that's causing the problem. If it wants to come out, come on, come on, come on. There we are. Oh, and I've dropped that button anyway. So uh, if that was the problem, at least it's gone away now. So we go from the Arduino to one side of the button. It'd help if I did this on screen. Okay. Then that goes to positive. Okay. Yeah, and when I press the button, it stops the Arduino from making a noise. You can see because it's updating the light. Okay. Then a resistor. goes from the positive tap to the negative if there's any ever you if there's ever any electrician watching i'm so sorry or an electrical engineer okay No, that popped out. Okay, so nothing. Uh, oh, oh. You know what? This has got me stumped today. Let's try a different note. Could just be a dodgy connection. 
Did I change the code on the Arduino at all? Okay, I'm going to try that. I'm going to try that because I wonder if the code on this Arduino is wrong. So I'm just booting up the Arduino IDE on my computer. Computer. Oh, crumbs, I wanted to get soldering today, but it looks like that's all going to be a bit of a worry. Come on, just thinking about it. Arduino.app would like to access files on your desktop folder. Uh, I mean, I've got it saved there, so yeah, why not? Oh, oh, oh. I got the spinning beach ball there for a second. Mm. Yeah. I'm just going to quickly flash across this version of the software just in case I've picked up the wrong Arduino, maybe. That could be it. Uh, I think this is the right one. I'm just doing a quick check old through. I'm much better at the program side of it than I am with the electronic side of it. Uh, and then we make sure that the Arduino Leonardo is selected. And we make sure it's on the right port. Run that across. Ooh, fingers crossed. If I do another stream where I've bricked another Arduino, I will not be happy with myself. Oh, it's done uploading. That was fast. That was suspiciously fast. Usually I'd thought, and usually it comes up with things like AVR dude and all that, but oh well. Uh, let's go back to this. Let's get MIDI view back up. Now, MIDI view is going mad. So, what happens if I attach the. Oh, crumbs. You know, you get it working, and then it all decides that it just... Just... No, not today. You don't deserve something to work. Oh, well. Just... Yeah, just... We'll do the... Uh, we'll do the soldering. Uh, because the fun thing about soldering is, if you get it wrong, it's fairly easy to uh, undo it. All you have to do is... Well, heat it up again. Yeah, I want to show some soldering, but first I must say something very important. Soldering is dangerous. You are literally holding a wand that is running at like 400 degrees C. Or 200, or in that region. And if it touches you, it will burn you, and it will burn you bad. Uh, they are hot. If you try and solder in a room with carpet and you drop your soldering iron, that's it. Your house is gone and destroyed. If you are doing some soldering and you leave the soldering iron turned on and walk away and there's too much flammable stuff nearby, that's it. Your house is gone. And um, I didn't know this for the longest time, but according to someone I talked to uh, down in the electrical engineering department at Swansea University, Apparently cold ice, cold solder can spit? I didn't know that. But I told him that I wasn't wearing safety glasses when doing soldering, and basically he told me off. <laughs> but yeah, um, cold solder apparently can spit, and it can flick everywhere, and it can flick into your eyes. So that's bad. Be careful. So if you do want to get into soldering, you must first get ex advice from an expert, because I am not. I'm completely amateur. In fact, I'll probably do everything wrong. I'm just showing you that this is the process that people go through when designing electronics. I'm not showing you how to do it, 
and I'm not advising you do it yourself. Okay, this is just a bit of fun. But also, get an adult to help you. Now, unfortunately, I am an adult, which means I can be irresponsible. But I'm not going to be. I'm going to try and be as safe as I can. In fact, I'm going to get my glasses now. If I got them in the... I left them somewhere. You know what? Let's uh, let's just go to this screen as I disappear and try and find my safety glasses. And I'm back. Yeah. <laughs> Glad I remember those. Anyway, let me introduce you to my friend, the soldering iron. Okay, I'm being very careful. I'm making sure I've got lots of space on the cable. And I'm holding it sensibly. And yeah, this is my little soldering stand. I get to see what I'm doing with a magnifying glass. And this is the soldering iron. This is hot, everyone. Say hello to it. And yeah, that feels very angry. I do not like it. Okay. And what I am going to be doing with this is a little bit of soldering. So let me get out my... little clamp of uh what do you call them again oh yeah bagpipe keys and i'm gonna put in a top button in the first hole just to get that ready i'm gonna screw it on tight Uh, now I need a little bit of wire. Oh, yeah, that's a good view for it. Where's my wire gone? You know what? I can't... If I didn't nail it... Uh, I, I can't even remember the phrase that's meant to be that I have no idea what's going on. What's the phrase when you're all all over the place? I don't know. I've lost my marbles. That's what I've done. <laughs> Let me go get my wire. So, I've got a box of very lovely coloured wires. And I got my favourite tool in, well, basically, my favourite tool, which is the wire strippers or the wire climp crimpers. Yeah, crimpers. And what they do, let's just move that gingerly out the way, is you put some wire in. You squeeze and it grabs onto it with these teeth and just pulls the end of the wire off. Because if I get a bit of wire... It's very hard to see, but inside this bit of plastic tubing is a tiny bit of copper or some other metal. And if I strip it off... 
we can expose the matter. I'm going to give that a lovely little twist just to straighten it out and make it neat. Okay. Now, to get started, it's very important I do a couple of things first. One of them is to make sure my solder iron is nice and clean. And again, remember this is hot. Be careful with soldering irons. What I'm doing is just putting on a bit of damp sponge that I've wetted. Okay. Here's my solder on a little reel. It's just basically some very thin metal that melts really easily. And I'm going to tin my soldering iron. And what that means is give it a nice uh, sort of finish. Okay. Oh, that's making lots of buzzy sounds in my ear. Okay. And that just cleans it off a bit. Gets rid of all the gunk that builds up. And we've got a nice clean tip on it. Okay. And this is where things get tricky. And this is why I've got this stand. This stand has crocodile clips on it and I'm not sure if you can see those that's just coming through at the top there a little clip and that clip will just hold on to things for me so I'm gonna grab this wire I'll need to put some solder on this wire first though just because that helps things flow a lot better so let's get this in the clip. It'd help if it would face the right way. Okay. And the thing with soldering is you don't really heat up the solder. You heat up the thing, then you put the solder on it, and the solder will then automatically flow. At least that's the idea. So I'm going to try and heat up this end of the wire. Just put a little, couple little dabs of solder on it. And that's just called tinning your wires. Okay. And that just makes it a nice solid connection. You're not going to get any bits of the wire because the, the wire is like string. It's got lots of different bits to it. We're just making sure the wire's all one piece. Okay. Now, it could be hot, so I'm going to be careful. But we can now put it into one side of our button. And I'm going to put it in one side. You know what? Maybe I shouldn't have tinned it. I was thinking too clever ahead of time. Or maybe I've tinned it a bit too much. So let's just take off a little bit from that or just loosen it up. Okay, and then I'm just going to bend that round. Now we need to make a nice little solder joint there. If I can get that in the right place. Oh, it's all wanting to go everywhere today. Not being kind to me. Okay, I don't need the clip for this one because it seems to be staying where it is. But I'm going to heat up the component first. Okay, that's heating up nicely. Then I'm going to apply the solder. And 
and it sometimes takes a while to go. There we are. You never want too much, and you don't want too little either. You want just the right amount. And I've probably got a little bit too much on there, but I'm happy with that. And yeah, we made our first connection. And yeah, I'm just going to carry on with doing that with the other wires. I'm not going to um, take the wires out of the housing at all. What am I talking about? I'm not going to cut the wires off on the other end because I don't know how long this piece will need to be. But let's get another one in. This one's black. Uh, typically red is kept for positive and black is kept for negative. But I forgot to do that, so... I'm just going to have to live with it. Let's give it a little strip with the strippers. Oh, it came off the wrong end then. Oh, well. Just gives us an extra long bit to work with. Now, you can get something. Actually, I am going to trim that because it's a bit big. You can get something called heat shrink tubing. And what there is, is some plastic tube. Come on, clip. Clip off. Thank you. Yeah, that's just been a disaster. I'm going to try that again. Just do a new... That's my fault, that is. I tried to... I thought I'd buy some nice fancy new wire. Just for these bagpipes. And so I bought some. But I didn't realise that when it said how thick it was, the seller decided to say how thick the overall wire was. What I thought they meant was how thick the inside of the wire was. And so I got something that was a little bit not the right size for me. I, I'm not used to this fiddly stuff. But yeah, let's let's try without tinning, see if that works any better. Well it threads through a bit rough, but it might save us a job if this clip goes on nicely. We are. Now I'm going to heat up the part. And then I'm going to apply the solder on the other side. And hopefully, the heat will draw the solder through and coat that nicely. Sometimes you need to get it a little bit molten first. Let's just make sure that joint is nice and good. Yeah, I call that all right. Maybe again a little bit too much. As I said, I'm not an expert. Yeah, that was quite a bit actually. <laughs> and it's not the neatest either. I've got little bits of frayed ends. I'm not sure whether you'll ever be able to see that on camera. But hey, well, I'm learning. And the cool part about learning is you can make your mistakes. The only problem is. Uh, Mistakes with a soldering iron hurt. That's one thing they uh, say when you're learning how to solder for the first time. Once you burn yourself, you'll never do it again. And, uh, yeah, it does hurt. But still. Oh, I'm trying to... So these buttons, they come with a little nut on them. Come on, camera, focus, focus. It's not going to focus. They come with a little nut on them, so you can screw it into a panel, which is kind of what I'm doing, but I'm using a wood panel. I usually use something nice like acrylic or um, even, you know, metal. But, yeah, that one was tough for some reason. Okay, I'm going to install it. And then screw it on the other side with the nut. There 
There we are. And yeah, let's go for the yellow wire this time. So I have a bit of yellow wire. I'm going to crimp it. Not crimp it, strip it. To get my end. And then I'm going to twist them up. So they're nice and neat. And I will tin this lot. Uh, because I think there's a lot neater. If you do get clever, you can solder without a stand. But it's very tricky. Because soldering is almost as if you need three hands for it. And only when you get very good can you do it without a stand. And even then, you'll still want to stand for some reasons. Oh, I've completely botched that. Or oh, I should have used a stand, I think. Ah, well. We'll see where we get to with that. Thread it through. Yeah, no, botched it. I was right the first time, we could have skipped that step. Well, I was right the second time, could have skipped that step. Nah. No. Ah, there we are. There we are. Okay, and then I'll just do another please for I need some uh music I feel. Whilst I'm doing these more doing stuff streams. What are you guys' thoughts on music? I always like video game music because mostly it's designed to not distract you. So it's always a, just a sort of nice background thing to listen to. Um, back when I had to do the whole exams thing, I used to listen to a lot of... Uh, video game music whilst I was revising. That was quite helpful. But yeah, it's all about the mood for me. I like my video game music with a bit of atmosphere. In fact, though, back a while ago, about over a year now, I reckon, I'll have to check the dates. Uh, when I first started doing streams, I'd have music on at the start and yeah i stopped that for a bit just because it was quite tricky to set up i've always thought about bringing it back but i'm never certain about it i never really have the time to decide whether i will or not or you know to get it working but you never know Ooh, missed that one It is one of these activities where you need like 50 hands. And even then you'll need someone to hold the cup of tea. There we are. That's, that's not too bad. That's quite neat, that one. At least... I say so. By my standards, that's neat. I don't think a real electrical engineer would agree. A bit more. Yeah. The one thing you've got to watch out for. So I'm using um, 
Well, I can't remember the term for it. Yeah, there's there's two kinds of wire. There's solid core, and then there's not solid core, and I've forgotten the name for it. But basically, the not solid core is the one with all these tiny little fibres as the wire. Where a solid core is just a solid lump of metal. And this stuff's really nice and flexible, but the solid core isn't. The only problem with this stuff is if you let a fibre loose, there's a risk that it could actually touch something else. And if it touches something else, you're going to get an electrical short. Where you know you're gonna get electricity going where you don't want it, and that can cause a lot of problems. So it's good to watch out for that. Let's do this one. Lovely. It's so satisfying using these. You can't resist giving them a couple of clicks. I might have to put them away so I don't get tempted to do them too many times. Oh, I'll tell you what music I have been enjoying recently. Uh, if anyone's out there watching, they're doing Games Done Quick again. Um, it's virtual this year, but it happens twice a year, I believe. And it's all about speed running different games. And not only is it amazing to see all the amazing skills of the speed running community just going mad, but it just seems like everyone's so nice. <laughs> Genuinely, it's proper, you know, everyone's just, it's a very wholesome stream. I only brought that up because, uh, what was I gonna say? Yeah, they they play music in the intermission when everyone's having a break, and they've been pulling out some amazing stuff, and they're all remixes of video game music. That's been most enjoyable. Yeah, that would be interesting giving a a speed run a go on Tech and Life. But unfortunately, my skills for it are absolutely zero. I just do not have... I do not have the video gaming skill to pull off some of these techniques that they're doing in these speedruns. It'd be nice to learn, though. It's an interesting skill. Yeah. Not one I think I'll ever be able to attain. You know. Hmm. So I got enough solder on that joint already, but I'm just going to do the rest of it just to get those, as I said, get those fibers out the way so they're not going to go anywhere and cause any problems. Um. So yeah, that, that's what we got so far. Each of these is wired up. Um Oh I need to put the other other what's it word is in. Oh what's the word? Button. That's it. How could I forget button? Just slot that one in. Just lined up. Come on, come on. There we are. And we got blue wire today. It's a very nice blue. It's almost it's almost glowing on screen. It doesn't look that good in real life, I'm afraid. Um, yeah, let's... Oh, there they are. I told you I'd put away my wire strippers to stop myself playing with them. Strip that. 
yeah, you can strip wire with a pair of pliers or a pair of scissors. But you have to be so careful not to just cut straight through it. And before I was able to buy a pair of these, I was doing it with kitchen scissors. And I just destroyed so much wire because I just kept cutting straight through it by mistake. Well, that's something to watch out for. Come on. Come on. There we are. Oh, I completely mangled that. Oh, that's shoddy, that is. That is not good work. Oh, well. You do your best. And if you don't do so well, that's all right. You'll do better next time. Uh, that's what I'll say. Because next time you try, your best will be better. And that's what matters. Nice. Yeah. Something very interesting is happening in my ear. When I have the soldering iron tip, and I touch it with a bit of solder, I get my a buzz in my headphones. And I think the reason why is my headphones are going into my mixing desk. I say mixing desk, it's like that big. It's it's not a mixing, mixing desk. It's a mixer. But that's powered by electricity. So that's going into a plug. It's also going into uh, the same plug as my soldering iron is plugged in. So I'm wondering if it's doing something very interesting where... Is kind of making a connect electrical connection, and I know when you set up audio equipment, you have to be very careful for that. It's called um, oh, what's it called? Oh yeah, ground loop. So if you ever get a buzz from some speakers, it's because you, you know, you're causing sort of a talk between the wires of something or you're causing a connection between two bits of your household's electricity that you really shouldn't okay got another one in and i will do the last uh yeah i'll do another button on the end just so i don't forget to do it later yeah, the bagpipes, they have nine keys. But on this piece, I've only got options for eight. And the reason why is because I need one to go around the back. Because that's where your thumb rests on the top set of buttons. And of course, on a real bagpipes, this would be a... Um, well, it'd be a tube and you'd be covering up holes. You wouldn't be pressing any buttons. The tube is called the chanter, and that's where you sort of make the melody of the bagpipes, the bits that make the song. The big pipes on the top are just the drones, and all they do is drone on. Uh, da -da -da. White wire for this one. Yeah, I did so much research for this. And uh, 
all I wanted was just to play the bagpipes, and it's such a high cost of entry. To get proper bagpipes, they're so expensive. And to get practice bagpipes, that's also so expensive. And then that's not including all the lessons, all the books. And it seems very annoying. And I think a lot of instruments are lot like that. I think accordions are notoriously expensive. Which is a shame because they seem such fun to play. Yeah, when I was a lot younger, I did try and learn the piano and the trombone. And I never got very good with them. But I did enjoy them, and I, I wish I hadn't stopped, actually. I'd love to be more musical. And <laughs> that's a funny thing. With these bagpipes up and running, I still won't be musical. <laughs> Just because all I'll make are loud bagpipe screeches. Hmm. And oh, we're just past time, but I'll go for one more. Um, actually, I won't because I've uh, run out of color options for my wire, and I'd like to have them a different colored wires just because that makes it easier for me to wire these up in the future. Yeah, I'm gonna turn off the soldering iron to be extra safe. And I'm going to slowly move it out the way to somewhere where it can't tip over and can't fall. Let's see what I've done today, other than make a mess. So I've got a little bit of the wiring of my uh, bagpipe sorted. I've just wired up one side of the buttons, and I've got one more button to go as well. But the other side, once I worked out what I was doing wrong with the circuitry... What I'll do is I'll wire these up, and then it should be just a case of cutting off these wires at the right point, plugging them into the Arduino, plugging the Arduino into my... Is it going to switch on? It is going to switch on. Meet my bagpipes, or at least the, the, the sound part of the bagpipes. And sorry for the dodgy screen. That's on account of, you know, trying to record a screen with a camera. Never works. But hopefully I should be able to plug my Arduino into here. Then I switch the bagpipes on, and I'll be able to play all sorts of different things. And, uh, yeah, it doesn't sound great at the moment. Yeah, that's one little jaunt, little, one little joy, a little bit of soldering, a little bit of quiet time, a little bit of mindfulness. I hope you enjoyed. The stream was all over the place, but, you know, that's how we usually do the streams. So, in any case, I hope you enjoyed. Hope you have a lovely evening and good night.